Okay, welcome to another Lunar Flight video. So we started a brand new profile from scratch. So the current lunar module that we're in has no upgrades whatsoever. We have completed a couple of missions at this point, so we do have the money to afford some upgrades, but we don't yet have the experience. So let's go ahead and fly one or two more missions. Probably one more mission will give us enough. Uh, will give us enough money to, or rather, will give us enough experience to get some kind of upgrade. So let's do a data survey because we haven't done a data survey yet on this uh, first map. So let's just go ahead and accept that. All right, and then put it up on the navigation and then go to the map. So the data survey location is really close by, so we just need to hover up, rotate around, and fly over there. So let's go ahead and get started. Hover up and start rotating. And we'll see the data survey location. It's right there. So let's start eliminating that yaw. And we just need to translate forward. I'm not going to bother pitching the vessel over because it's pretty close where we're going. So we just need to translate over there, get the vessel inside of that sphere. And then, unfortunately, we have to take our hands off the controller so that we can click uh, missions at that point and, and then acquire data. And we just need to hover inside of that sphere for just a few seconds. It's pretty easy. And then once we've acquired our data, we just have to return. Uh, I don't know if we have to return to the base that we came from or if it picks a new one for us, but we'll find out when we get over there. Let me see if I can use the select to lock the thrust so I can get us to like a point of buoyancy. So the V-rate's starting to come down now, but now I don't have to constantly thrust thrust. So we just put in a bit more power just to try to find that zero point. And I think I've got it right there. So let me just take out just a tiny bit of power to bring the V-rate down to zero. And then add in just a little bit of power to hopefully hold us right there, because I think we're perfectly, uh, I think we're perfect where we need to be. Let me just translate a bit to the right. Right, I think we're very well centered now. And let's just go straight into the sphere. All right, just a bit more power because I can see the V-rate drop negative. So we might have to go power on power, power on power. So let's go to missions and get ready to acquire data. Let's uh, take out the translation. That's a bit seizure inducing, <laughs> those lines. All right, acquire data and take out the rest of the forward velocity. So we'll just kind of stay put right here where we're at. All right, add in just a little more power and now we need to go to Bravo. All right, so let's yaw around so that we're facing Bravo. And let's land at Bravo without overshooting at this time. All right, translating towards Bravo, take out just a little bit of power because our V rate's increasing. All right, we're down to the halfway point on our fuel, but we should be okay. I think we can make it just need to make sure we don't overshoot, so need to pay attention to the distance from the landing pad and all that stuff. But if we get desperate, we can use another fuel module. Alright, switch to the C camera. Take out a little bit of power so we can descend just a little bit and start eliminating some of that forward velocity. Just 35 meters to go. Eliminate a bit more forward velocity so we don't overshoot. And we can take a quick look at how our situation looks if we were looking at it from the outside. 
add in just a bit more power, offset our sink. And there we are, we're down. All right, so let's refuel and let's upload our data. And now we should have enough experience, I'm thinking. Yeah, we got a promotion. And we should have enough experience to buy an upgrade. So let's go shopping. So we have thrust, fuel, RCS, and stabilizer. I'm going to save the stabilizer for last. I think it's probably, probably the least important. I kind of think while we're here on this map, the most important upgrades are RCS and fuel efficiency. Not so much thrust. We have plenty of thrust. So let me actually get the RCS first. And then if I can afford it, I'll get fuel efficiency. And if I can still afford it, I'll get thrust efficiency. Okay, so we got all the level one upgrades other than stabilizer. Quite frankly, I don't really care about that one and I can't afford it anymore anyway. So let's go ahead then and do, uh, let's do another lost cargo mission. Cause I, I just, I find those the most fun. So, so there's two, there's uh, west of Alpha and northwest of Bravo. So west of Alpha, which would be um, over here, and then northwest of Bravo, which would be like in between. Let's do, so we're at Bravo, so let's do the one that's by Bravo, northwest of Bravo. So let's accept that one and go to the map. Okay, so to the north and to the west of Bravo, so probably like right in between Alpha and Bravo. So that being the case, let me put... <clears throat> Let me put Alpha on the on the uh, radar so that I've got a little bit of a target uh, when I'm yawing the bus over. All right, so let's hover up and let's rotate around. And I don't think I'll have to go very far at all. All right, and let's just. Uh, translate forward, but I believe the lost cargo has to be just basically between these two bases. Did I turn the transponder on? Okay, so I have a transponder signal, so... Okay, I see it. It's right over to the currently in my blind spot, but I have already spotted it. Definitely a lot easier to find those lost cargoes on this map. <laughs> We're just going to hover up to that location, land right next to the cargo, load it up, and then probably, I don't know if we return to the location we came from, or, or if it'll have us deliver it to some other base, but let's find out. Should be close enough now. Bit of a bumpy landing there. Turn off the transponder, recover the cargo, and then we just have to find out which one of the bases we need to deliver it to. Okay, Alpha, so let's go to the map. And it's already selected. So we're actually taking it to a different base than the one we took off from. Check cargo for destination. I've already done that. And yeah, it's uh and it's already selected on the map. So hover up, yaw around a little bit. All right, 
and let's pitch forward and head over to Alpha. Now we're only 270 meters out, so we don't want to go too crazy fast. Let's say that's good enough. Find that zero position. Okay, now we just need to watch our distance and our forward velocity just to make sure that we slow down in time and we don't overshoot it like we did the <laughs> couple missions ago. Yeah, I can definitely feel the strain on the engines with carrying this mass. Right, so start slowing down just a little bit. Just because I can see that those RCS thrusters they're not they're not changing our velocity very quickly. Okay, so we're almost over the pad, just a few more meters to go. We can unload this cargo, get a little bit more experience, a little bit more money. And perhaps if we want to be maybe a bit dangerous, we can move on to the next map. Even though we've only got like one upgrade at this point, but I think it's fine. Okay, so we're almost over the pad. Just a little more translation maneuvers. And just need to let ourselves settle down on the pad. And we're down. All right, so refuel before we forget. Go to the cargo, unload the cargo, and get our money and our credit. All right, so let's do one more. Let's go to uh, missions and let's just do a transport this time. So let's go, actually, let's go ahead and do another lost cargo. My, my, Regret that, but let's do it. So accept the lost cargo. Make sure the transponder's on. Go to the map. Actually, let me look. North of Alpha. Okay. And we're landed at Alpha. So let's go north of Alpha. Power up. Yaw the vessel around a little bit. So we're facing north. Make sure we clear the antenna and start translating forward. I wonder if it's gonna be up on the cliff. It might be, because there's not much north of Alpha other than that cliff wall. And that's what I was saying earlier, that when I was messing with this just on my own, I, I thought that that cliff wall was like the limit of the bounds and you couldn't go any farther than that. And uh, so I was looking everywhere for the lost cargo and I absolutely could not find it. And then finally I just happened to be like, well, let me just see if I can go up above the crater wall and sure enough you can, and I see the module. So let me start translating a bit to the right. It's right on the edge of the cliff. Just taking out my forward velocity because I've already kind of lost track. I put in too much up thrust. Just rotate around a little bit. I need to settle down a little bit so I can see better. I don't want my B rate to get out of control. But you can hear that beeping getting more. Uh, it's increasing. Slow down my descent a little bit. OK, 
Okay, so I'm over the crater wall. But I think the module's probably behind me or to my right. There it is. need to touch down right by the module, pick it up, and deliver it for our money. Alright, we've touched down, cargo, turn off that noise, recover the cargo. And where do we need to deliver it to? Delta. So can I just hit... Target? Nav? No. I thought once you got it, you could just do something like that, but I guess not. Alright, so let's go Delta. Alright, how are we doing on fuel? 686. Alright, let's hover up and go to Delta. Now, I don't really want any altitude at all, because I just need to clear the cliff wall, and then it's all downhill from there, literally. Oops, need a bit more than that though. Oh no, oh no, oh no. This is not good. Uh, oh my god. We're in all kinds of trouble now. Ship is all wonky. Alright, let's see if we can recover this disaster. Success, but we still have some roll. Bit of yaw. Okay. Crisis averted. That was a bit of a sweat. <laughs> All right, let's yaw around now. Okay. That little kerfuffle may end up making us have to use a fuel module. forward and fly. Thought I was going to end up crashing. And we can take a look at what this looks like from the external view. Okay, remember we're not going very far, so we don't want to put in a lot of forward thrust because we just make things a lot more difficult on ourselves than it has to be. Alright, so we have just a little bit of, of rolls, so let's take that out. Wrong direction, like always. Okay, translate a bit to the left. Alright, start taking out some of that forward translation and keep an eye on our V-Rage so that we have control of it, so we're not dropping so fast that we can't do anything about it. I'm going to pitch back and eliminate some of that forward velocity. Because those translation thrusters just aren't doing much. Even the main engines are taken quite a while to eliminate that velocity. Alright, mostly sinking straight down now, so let's translate to the left. Got a pretty good V rate right now. A bit worried about it to be honest. The fuel. Okay, well that was a bit more exciting than I thought it would be. <laughs> but I think we're okay. But it's definitely taking us longer to get over here than I thought it would. I just 
really fumbled the uh, well I didn't fumble the controls but the leg of the lunar module dragged on the side of the cliff and it started pitching me and rolling me and I was like oh no that's I've had that happen before and I wasn't able to recover from it but uh, once again the using the Xbox 360 controller with this game I think is much easier than using the keyboard and I'm a keyboard I'm a keyboard fanatic I generally play games with the keyboard I prefer it but every now and then there are just some things that just make more sense with controls. I mean, the biggest example would be the granularity of the thrust. If I push the button down a little bit, I get a little bit of thrust. If I push it down a lot, I get a lot of thrust. Whereas with keyboards, you have that binary input. It's all the way on or all the way off. And that's kind of what I find also when I'm flying an orbiter in the atmosphere. I prefer to use a joystick so that I can have you know, a little bit of input, a middle amount of input, you know, it's not just all or nothing with, like it is with the keyboard. Alright, so we're almost to our target. Start eliminating some of that left translation. Okay, we're here, so now we just need to touch down on the pad gently. All right, we made it. Like I said, a bit more excitement there than I thought we would have, but nevertheless, we succeeded. Let's go ahead and unload this. Got our fuel. Not save the replay, do a quick check in the shop. So we now have 10,000 experience. It looks like we need 12,500 for the next level of upgrades. We probably have the money for it now. Yeah, the next upgrades cost 20,000. So we can afford them, but we just need to complete a couple more missions to get the experience. All right, so that's going to be it for uh, this mission. Once again, hope you're enjoying watching these Lunar Flight videos. I do enjoy messing around with this game from time to time. Uh, so I will see you in the next video.